One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Okay. Hello, hello, internet world. This is Norma Jo. Alright, so, finally, I'm gonna get into this, uh, zombie fest right here. Oh my god, you can't even see it. My camera is really just terrible. Well, pretend like you can see it, because you really can't see shit. Oh, man, this camera's going downhill in a big way. Anyway, uh, it's okay, because you don't have to see. You can just watch these little blurry things on the screen and listen to my voice. It's better than, um, what's that fucking shit people like? Uh, ASMR. It's better than that bullshit. So, yeah. Anyway, this story is so precious to me, even though it probably sucks. When I start reading it, I'll probably just die a thousand deaths, but who gives a shit, you know? Um, but yeah, this represents the time in my life, well, adult life, when I was happiest, okay? Had a good-ass job where I was basically unofficially being paid to just be an artist. All me and my friends were, we were a great community and I wish it could have gone on forever and ever and ever. But anyways, I got some good writing done out of that time because it's pretty one of the only fucking times in my adult life where I could do devote that kind of time to doing art and shit like that. So I got a lot of shit done and it has never been that good since. But maybe someday, I don't know. Um, anyway, this is from, it says it's from 2014 to 2016. So I guess it's from the same time period as, um, you know, Hose of Libria. I did that one first, and then I think I did this one. I mean, I was kind of doing them all at the same time, but I think it was basically like Hose of Liberty first, then this one, and then the, the sci-fi one that I just read, and then, the of course, before the sci-fi one, the other Joshie and Dawson stories, and, you know, so I was doing a lot. It was great. It was great. Um, anyway... Where was I? Yes, this is Zombie Fest. So, if you will recall the year 2014, I think The Walking Dead had already been on TV for a couple of years and it was so fucking popular and nobody could get enough of it, including my own family. And it was just constantly everywhere. It was in magazines and it was in, uh, I got emails from Hot Topic dot com telling me to come buy Walking Dead merchandise and even though I never watched the show because I could just tell it wasn't for me it's too fucking gory people having surgeries done I, here's something I have to explain I don't I don't like certain kinds of gore okay I don't give a fuck if it's like just people being bitten and zombies just chewing people apart and that's all fine and dandy, but once you get into this whole bullshit of like, oh, someone was injured or vi uh, infected or whatever, and now we, like, us humans, we're gonna chop them apart and mutilate them because we want to, um, try to save them, really, just to give the audience, the sick, sadistic audience, some fucking drama to look at while these people are suffering and shit like that. So, I find it to be kind of a sadistic show. But so is everything else on TV, so it's not the only one, clearly. But anyways, fucking Walking Dead was everywhere. It was el in every toy store, it was in the mall, and anyways, even though I never watched this shit, I got into collecting the figures because my dad was into collecting them. He still has all of his and I don't have any of mine, I fucking gave them away and donated them and shit like that, but it was- I had them for a time. And I liked how they kind of scaled them to each other, like, they made the the little ones littler. Like, I had Carl, he was like smaller than the average figure. Anyways, whatever, and they all have really cool looking outfits. Uh, I'm just going on and on, so basically, put yourself back in that mindset where Walking Dead was fucking all over the place. And I don't even know now if the show is still on or not. Uh... But it's still obviously not as popular as it used to be. But, so, here we go. Just like, um, the Star Wars slash Star Trek thing was basically a conglomeration of all sci-fi thing. Well, not all, but a lot of sci-fi things that I know about. Like, Alien and, you know, all that shit. Uh, um, 
this is all zombie stuff. So it's not only The Walking Dead, it's also... Well, let me just read you what the cover says. Since it, <laughs> you, I wish you could see it. God, it makes it look like a blank paper, but it's all actually, like, full of words and writing. Look, there, you can kind of see it now, because it's really close. Okay, my fucked up camera. It says, at the top, there's a picture of a tombstone, a hand coming out of the ground, a bat, and a daddy long legs. So I hate daddy long- well, I don't hate them, but I- they just freak me out. I want to get a tattoo of a daddy long legs, because they're just so fucking weird. Um, zombie fest, a playful spoof of all your horror favorites. The Walking Dead, George A. Romero's zombie films, dumbass millennial shit, 1970s exploitation, and much more. Nobody even cares about us millennials anymore. The Zoomers have taken over, and rightly so. Oh, one of my pages ripping. Okay, that's fine. Oh man, there's no fucking page numbers in this? That's okay, I think I put the page- I have two prints. I think I put the page numbers on the other one. Anyway, alright, let's get it started. Our movie opens up on a plain black screen. Oh wait, is my sound on? Okay. We see nothing, but we hear a car drive by and splash through a puddle. Blood splashes up on the screen, fear and loathing style. I love that movie. Uh, and as it drips down, it spells out the name, a zombie parody. Then below it, not for the faint of heart. The blood drips all the way down and disappears, leaving the screen blank again. We hear a, a quiet little voice singing. An eerie, lullaby-ish man's voice with a southern accent. Southern man. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. The second guy's voice joins in and they sing the song lullaby. So, and they sing the song lullaby style together. Both guys together. Except I can't do two voices, obviously, so just pretend. Uh, for he's a jolly good fellow. That nobody can deny. Gunshot sound. Finally, the movie comes on and we can see. It turns out that the gunshot wasn't really a gunshot at all. It was just the cork popping off a bottle of bubbly wine. We can see the bubbly overflowing over a guy's hands who's holding the bottle. And from the background, we hear the other guy playing a kazoo. <sighs> Zoom out a little bit. Rick is holding the bottle and Shane has a kazoo. They're dressed up like sheriff and deputy. Who is who? Well, I'll give you a wild fucking guess. <laughs> They're in one of those old school, one room schoolhouse type of police stations. You know, that has like a desk and maybe two jail cells and that's it. So damn bumpkin. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be insulting and very politically incorrect, so... But, who cares? I mean, I feel like I've already... What What's the most politically incorrect story that I put on so far that was, like, funny? Because I like I want to say the most politically incorrect story is f probably five stories, but I mean the the story that was called named five stories fucking confusing, um, but that's that was not like like the only reason that's like un PC is because it's like um you know the there's a one character that's talking about like all the beauty standards and shit like that. But honestly, that's not even that bad because you can just say, like, well, that's through the eyes of that character, you know? But still, people don't like to hear that shit. And then, um, the, the you know, the three Southerners with the dude, uh, and I was trying to, you know, write a Southern accent. So, I'm sure this is gonna have fucking redneck jokes up the yin-yang. But, uh, you know, whatever. Okay, where was I? Uh, it might as well be an all black and white or se sepia like the beginning of Wizard of Oz, but don't worry because it's not. <laughs> Rick looks over towards the cell, so towards the cells where they keep the prisoners. Well, there's only one prisoner here today. Some fat, half dazed looking, blotchy faced alcoholic guy. Rick. Oh god, do I have to- I'm not gonna do southern accents because you know I don't do accents and I don't want to have to fucking- that would just be like- this is, like, probably a hundred pages. Um, where was I? Rick, usually I'd tell you to stay off the booze, Drinky Dan, but what the hell? It's your birthday. <laughs> Canned laughter. Oh, yeah, and Shane also laughs, too. 
Rick pours the bubbly. It's spelled like B U B B dash L A Y for everyone, and they're all about to toast and drink when suddenly a knock on the door. Shane startles and almost drops his glass. Who the fuck is that? Rick, uh, a voice comes from the other side of the door. Voice, inspection, open up. This is another, um, Andy Griffith parody, by the way, if you don't recognize. Because I don't, first of all, I know this video is only getting at one view ever, and that's mine. But just in case, I know, uh, Andy Griffith's not exactly popular TV anymore. So, uh, yeah. Watch this episode. It's really funny, actually. But I ripped it off, because that's what I do. Pan over to show the calendar on the wall with the current day reading inspection day and circled like a million times with red marker. Rick. Hmm, I must have forgot. Shane. Holy shit, Rick. This inspector's gonna kick our asses. What are we gonna do? Inspector banging on the door. Let me in. Rick waves it off. Eh, ain't nothing but a thing. The inspector is chill. Every year he comes around and we just sh schmooze, drink a little, smoke a little, go down to the lake and fish, you know, shit like that. No big deal. Shane, and he passes you? Rick, hell yeah. I told you, he's cool. 100% every year. Rick drinks his drink down and then goes and opens the door. Rick, Lenny, how are you? He gets cut off as the inspector barges in angrily through the door. It is clearly not the inspector that Rick was expecting. <laughs> this inspector is some angry-ass looking little gray-haired dude who looks like some kind of businessy no soul having Christmas movie villain. The kind of guy who would put a foreclosure on an, oh, on an orphanage. <laughs> Inspector, about time you let me in. He whips out a clipboard and starts scribbling notes furiously. Inspector, ten points off for dirty station. Ten points off for disorganized desk. Ten points off for untimely start of appointment. <laughs> ten points off for musky scent. Ten points off for impo improper protocol. Shane, impro improper protocol. Uh, inspector, aren't you supposed to salute when an inspector arrives? Shane and Rick quickly stand at attention and salute. Shane, nervous laugh. <laughs> hey, let me have a private word with the sheriff for a moment. He grabs Rick and drags him over to the corner, out of earshot, supposedly, of the inspector. Shane, whispering frantically, Dude, this guy's ripping our asses apart. You gotta do something. Rick, don't worry, I got it covered. He goes back to the inspector, who is feverishly writing down all their demerits. <laughs> Rick. Hey, hey. So, you're the new inspector, huh? Trying to be all chummy. Why don't we go sit down, you know, get to know each other. Let me pour you a little wine. Pan over to show Drinky Dan guzzling the rest of the wine from the bottle. How did he get it? He's in a cell and I thought the wine was, like, on a table or something, but okay. Rick. Oh, uh, never mind that last part. The inspector just gives him a glare but says nothing. He goes back to writing down some more demerits. Then suddenly a call comes in. Oh, oh shit, I forgot to do my tallies. Ah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna grab my phone. I'm gonna do some tallies. Uh. Okay, so, I will put a tally every time I say suddenly, uh, a stretched out word like damn or whoa or some stupid shit like that. Um, what was it? What else was I going to put on here? It was like my four top sins. Suddenly, stretched out words. Uh, I would put, like, stage whisper, but I don't think that's such a big sin. Plus, there's so many of those. It would dominate. Um, anyways, whatever. When they come up, I'll put them on there. Okay, where was I? <sighs> a call comes in over the police radio. Crackly, staticky radio voice. Rick, Shane! You two are needed urgently. That means now! Rick picks up the radio. You got the station. What's your situation? Oh, I love that. 
I wanted to make a t-shirt of that when I was writing this story because I thought it was so funny. I never did. Uh, radio voice. It's Luke. He's doing it again. Rick. Oh, okay. We'll get right on it. He hangs up. Rick to the inspector and Shane. Hey, guys. Time for a mini road trip. Cut to the three of them driving in a cop car down a little dirt road. <sighs> the inspector is still all about writing his notes. Shane. What the hell are you writing down in there? Inspector. This car is way out of date and way out of regulation. The seats look like garbage. Have you ever had this vehicle cleaned? You still have roll-up windows? And did you even realize that you left a cinder block in the back seat? <laughs> Shane. Oh, well, the cinder block is there for a reason. It's to put behind the tire, you know, if we park on a hill or something, so the car don't slide. Inspector. Face palms. Looks back up. I don't usually curse, but what, gosh darn it, <laughs> is... Oh, come on, turn page. Uh, what, gosh darn it, is wrong with you two? A convict... A convict could use it to smash the windows and kill you both. Not that that would be any huge loss. Ooh, this. Or at the very least, someone could hit their head on it back here, uh, back there, back here, whatever, and be knocked out for weeks. Shane shrugs carelessly. Eh. Oh, that should be another one when somebody, like, oh, emoji. If when somebody has an emoji face, that's that fucking shit, and that doesn't even translate to, like, reading. I mean, reading aloud, you know, if you were reading it yourself, it would translate, but me reading it to you, you know. Okay. Um... Shane shrugs carelessly. Eh. Rick. Enough chit-chatting, y'all. Are we gonna deal with Luke or not? Shane. Oh, okay, okay. Rick gets out of the car and heads up the dirt path towards a little count country shack house. Rick. Hey, Luke, come on, cut that out now. He hitches up his pants all nerdily. <laughs> all we see is the shack with boarded-up windows, but there's a little hole in the wall where the guy can see out and shoot at people. Luke, frantically, from inside the shack. Don't come near me. You think you can trick me into coming out there where the Arabs can get me? <laughs> the sound of him loading up a gun. Get out of here. I'm gonna defend this house till it's burned to the ground. Rick. Aw, oh, come on, Luke. You know me. He gets closer, unfazed. Don't you remember the last time? The inspector sticks his head out the car window. Inspector. What the hell are you doing, Sheriff? This is highly... <laughs> Luke fires and shoots the hat... Right off the inspector's head. Inspector scream slash squeal. Ah! I don't know. Jumps back in the car. He's gonna kill us. Get the National Guard up here. <laughs> yeah. Rick, oh come on. If Luke wanted to kill you, he'd already done it. He's just blowing, up, blowing off some steam. All self-assuredly. Let me show you how we do in this town. Yeah, so, like I said, if you haven't seen this episode of Andy Griffith, you should check. I don't remember what it was called, but this sh this is a direct rip off. So all this shit literally happens. It's like some fucking crazy person is like in his like shanty house, just shooting randomly. But then Andy Griffith's like he won't really shoot us, so he just walks up the road, talks to the guy, and tells him to stop. I guess or some shit like that. And then the inspector is like, "Okay, you're you're good after all, you know." But um. I don't remember the name of it. It was really fucking funny, though. I like that show a little bit. Not perfect, but I like it. Okay, where was I? Uh, he knocks on the door of the shack. Rick, come out, Luke, let's talk. To the inspector. See, all, he, all anyone needs is a little love and understanding. A sudden gunshot from inside the house shoots Rick straight in the belly. Damn, bitch. Cut to black. Cut to Shane driving the cop car like a maniac, speeding through traffic and shit, with the inspector in the passenger seat and Rick laying in the back, Reservoir Dog style. Yeah, that's classic right there. Everyone is all yelling over each other and losing their minds. Oh, my episode's almost over, so let me just tell you, I have not seen a single episode of The Walking Dead. I've seen a few seconds at a time. I have not even seen, like, half an episode or anything, because I refuse to watch the shit. But, uh, I'm just letting you know, I haven't seen a single fucking episode, so <laughs> all information I got from my family who was watching it. Let me count down the seconds. 
Seven, eight, nine, ten.